All right, well, good morning, everyone. Uh, today we're reading 1 Kings chapters 13 through 15 and then jumping over to Psalm 81. And so let's jump in. So the kingdom has split, right? So now the kingdom's divided and uh, you have um, Israel in the north with 10 tribes. You have uh, one tribe in the south, Judah, and obviously they're the, the Levites are the other tribe and they are, they are spread throughout. Um, so... Uh, now they've split, and Jeroboam is in the north as king. Rehoboam is, is in the south, the southern kingdom, Israel. And uh, very sadly, Jeroboam has now, for fear that people were going to go back to Israel, he has decided that he is going to implement all kinds of false worship. He is going to create his own golden calves in Dan and Bethel, um, in in the two you know furthest regions of his uh, territory of Israel, uh, so that people won't go back to Jerusalem and consider going back to um, you know serving under Rehoboam. So very very foolish decision because God had told him if you follow me, I'll establish your throne. And so obviously it's not going to be established. God is not going to put up with that kind of nonsense. And so let's continue to read. Um, what happens in First Kings uh, 13 through 15 it says, By the word of the Lord, a man of God came from Judah uh, to Bethel as Jeroboam was standing by the altar to make an offering. By the word of the Lord, he cried out against that altar, altar, altar. This is what the Lord says. A son named Josiah will be born to the house of David, and on you he will sacrifice the priests of the high places who make offerings here, and human bones will be burned on you. That same day, the man of God gave a sign. This is the sign the Lord has declared. The altar will be split apart and the ashes on it will be poured out. And when King Jeroboam heard the man of God cried out against the altar at Bethel, he stretched out his hand from the altar and said, seize him. But the hand he stretched out toward the man shriveled up so that he could not pull it back. Also, the altar was split apart and its ashes poured out according to the sign given by the man of God by the word of the Lord. Then the king said to the man of God, intercede with the Lord, your God, and pray for me that my hand may be restored. So the man of God interceded with the Lord and the king's hand was restored and became as it was before. And the king said to the man of God, come home with me for a meal and I will give you a gift. But the man of God answered the king, even if you were to give me half your possessions, I would not go with you, nor would I eat bread or drink water here. For I was commanded by the word of the Lord, you must not eat bread or drink water or return by the way you came. So he took another road and did not return by the way he had come to Bethel. Now there was a certain old prophet living in Bethel whose sons came and told him all that the man of God had done here that day. They also told their father what he had what he had said to the king. Their father asked them, which way did he go? And his sons showed him which road the man of God from Judah had taken. So he said to his sons, saddle the donkey for me. And when they had saddled the donkey for him, he mounted it and rode after the man of God. He found him sitting under an oak tree and, and asked, are you the man of God who came from Judah? I am replied, he replied. So the prophet said to him, come home with me and eat. And the man of God said, I cannot turn back and go with you, nor can I eat bread or drink water with you in this place. I've been told by the word of the Lord, you must not eat bread or drink water there or return by the way you came. The old prophet answered, I too am a prophet as you are. And an angel said to me, by the word of the Lord, bring him back with you to your house so that he may eat bread and drink water. But he was lying to him. So the man of God returned with him and ate and drank in his house. While they were sitting at the table, the word of the Lord came to the old prophet who had brought him back. He cried out to the man of God who had come from Judah. This is what the Lord says. You have defied the word of the Lord and have not kept the command the Lord your God gave you. You came back and ate bread and drank water in the place where you were told not to eat or drink. Therefore, your body will not be buried in the tomb of your ancestors. When the man of God had finished eating and drinking, the prophet who had brought him back saddled his donkey for him. As he went on his way, a lion met him on the road and killed him. And his body was left lying on the road with both the donkey and the lion standing beside it. Some people who passed by saw the body lying there with the lion standing beside the body. And they went and reported it in the city where the old prophet lived. When the prophet who had, been brought, when the prophet who had brought him back from his journey heard of it, he said, It is the man of God who defied the word of the Lord. The Lord has given him over to the lion which has mauled him and killed him as the word of the Lord had warned him. The prophet said to his son, saddle the donkey for me. And they went and did so. Then he went out and found the body lying on the road with the donkey and the lion standing beside it. The lion had neither eaten the body nor mauled the donkey. 
So the prophet picked up the body of the man of God, laid it on the donkey, brought it back to his own city to mourn for him and bury him. And then he laid the body in his own tomb, and they mourned over him and said, Alas, my brother. After burying him, he said to his sons, When I die, bury me in the grave where the man of God is buried. Lay my bones beside his bones. For the message he declared by the word of the Lord against this altar in Bethel is against all the shrines on the high places in the towns of Samaria will certainly come true. Even after this, Jeroboam did not change his evil ways, but once more appointed priests for the high places from all sorts of people. Anyone who wanted to become a priest, he consecrated for the high places. This was the sin of the house of Jeroboam that led to its downfall and to its destruction from the face of the earth. At that time, Abijah, the son of Jeroboam, became ill. And Jeroboam said to his wife, go disguise yourself so you won't be recognized as the wife of Jeroboam. Then go to Shiloh. Ahijah the prophet is there, the one who told me I would be king over this people. Take 10 loaves of bread with you, some cakes and a jar of honey and go to him. He will tell you what will happen to the boy. So Jeroboam's wife did what he said and went to Ahijah's house in Shiloh. Now Ahijah could not see. His sight had gone because of his age. But the Lord had told Ahijah, Jeroboam's wife is coming to ask you about her son, for he is ill, and you are to give her such and such an answer. When she arrives, she will pretend to be someone else. So when Ahijah heard the sound of her footsteps at the door, he said, Come in, wife of Jeroboam. Why this pretense? I have been sent to you with bad news. Go tell Jeroboam that this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I raised you up from among the people and appointed you ruler over my people Israel. I tore the kingdom away from the house of David and gave it to you. But you have not been like my servant David, who kept my commands and followed me with all his heart, doing only what is right in my eyes. You have done more evil than all who lived before you. You have made for yourself other gods, idols made of metal. You have aroused my anger and turned your back on me. Because of this, I'm going to bring disaster on the house of Jeroboam. I will cut off from Jeroboam every last male in Israel, slave or free. I will burn up the house of Jeroboam as one burns dung until it is gone. Dogs will eat those belonging to Jeroboam who die in the city, and the birds will feed on those who die in the country. The Lord has spoken. As for you, go back home. When you set foot in your city, the boy will die. All Israel will mourn for him and bury him. He is the only one belonging to Jeroboam who will be buried because he is the only one in the house of Jeroboam in whom the Lord, the God of Israel, has found anything good. The Lord will raise up for himself a king over Israel who will cut off the family of Jeroboam. Even now, this is beginning to happen. And the Lord will strike Israel so that it will be like a reed swaying in the water. He will uproot Israel from this good land and he will... And he, that he gave to their ancestors and scatter them beyond the Euphrates River because they aroused the Lord's anger by making Asherah poles. And he will give Israel up because of their the sins of Jeroboam has committed and has caused Israel to, to commit. Then Jeroboam's wife got up and left and went to Terza. And as soon as she stepped over the threshold of the house, the boy died. They buried him and all Israel mourned for him, as the Lord had said through his servant, the prophet Ahijah. The other events of Jeroboam's reign, his wars, and how he ruled are written in the book of the Annals of the Kings of Israel. He reigned for 22 years and then rested with his ancestors, and Nadab, his son, succeeded him as king. Now Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, was king in Judah. He was 41 years old when he became king, and he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem, the city the Lord had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel in which to put his name. His, mother name, his mother's name was Nama. She was an Ammonite. Judah did evil in the eyes of the Lord. By the sins they committed, they stirred up his jealous anger more than, in, more than those who were before them had done. They also set up for themselves high places, sacred stones and ashel poles on every high hill and under every spreading tree. There were even male shrine prostitutes in the land. The people engaged in all the detestable practices of the nations the Lord had driven out before the Israelites. In the fifth year of King Rehoboam, Shishak, the king of Egypt, attacked Jerusalem. He carried off the treasures of the temple of the Lord and the treasures of the royal palace. He took everything, including all the gold shields Solomon had made. So King Rehoboam made bronze shields to replace them and assigned, to those, assigned these to the commanders of the guard on duty at the entrance to the royal palace. 
whenever the king went to the Lord's temple, the guards bore the shields and afterward they returned them to the guard room. As for the other events of Rehoboam's reign and all he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? There was continual warfare between Jeroboam, Rehoboam and Jeroboam. And Rehoboam rested with his ancestors and was buried with them in the city of David. His mother's name was Nama. She was an Ammonite. And Abijah, his son, succeeded him as king. In the 18th year of the, king, of the reign of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, Abijah became king of Judah. And he reigned in Jerusalem three years. His mother's name was Mekah, the daughter of Ab Abishalom. He committed all the sins his father had done before him. His heart was not fully devoted to the Lord his God, as the heart of David his forefather had been. Nevertheless, for David's sake, the Lord his God gave him a lamp in Jerusalem by raising up a son to succeed him and by making Jerusalem strong. For David had done what was right in the eyes of the Lord and had not failed to keep any of the Lord's commands all the days of his life, except in the case of Uriah the Hittite. There was a war between Abijah and Jeroboam throughout Abijah's lifetime. As for the other events of Abijah's reign and all he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? There was war between Abijah and Jeroboam. And Abijah rested with his ancestors and was buried in the city of David. And Asa, his son, succeeded him as king. Now, in the 20th year of, Jer year of Jeroboam, the king of Israel, Asa became the king of Judah. And he reigned in Jerusalem 41 years. His grandmother's name was Mekah, the daughter of Abishalom. Asa did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, as his father David had done. He expelled the male shrine prostitutes from the land and got rid of all of the idols his ancestors had made. He even deposed his grandmother, Mecha, from her position as queen mother because she had made repulsive, a repulsive image for the worship of Asherah. Asa cut it down and burned it in the Kidron Valley. Although he did not remove the high places, Asa's heart was fully committed to the Lord all his life. He brought into the temple of the Lord the silver and gold and the articles that he and his father had dedicated. There was war between Asa and Basha, the king of Israel, throughout their reigns. Basha, the king of Israel, went up against Judah and fortified Ramah to prevent anyone from leaving or entering the territory of Asa, the king of Judah. Asa then took all the silver and gold that was left in the treasuries of the Lord's temple and of his own palace. He entrusted it to his officials and sent them to Ben-Hadad, the son of Tibramon, the son of Hezion, the king of Aram, who was ruling in Damascus. Let there be a treaty between me and you, he said, as there was between my father and your father. See, I am sending you a gift of silver and gold. Now break your treaty with Basha, the king of Israel, so he will withdraw from me. Then Hadad agreed with the king Asa and sent the commanders of his forces against the towns of Israel. He conquered Ejion, Dan, Abel, Beth Mecca, and all Kinrith in addition to Naphtali. When Basha heard this, he stopped building Ramah and he withdrew to Terza. Then King Asa issued an order to all Judah. No one was exempt, and he carried away from Ramah the stones and timber Basha had been using there. When King Asa built with them, King Asa built up Geba in Benjamin and also Mizpah. As for all the other events of Asa's reign, all his achievements, all he did in the cities he built, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? In his old age, however, his feet became diseased. Then Asa rested with his ancestors and was buried with them in the city of his father David, and Jehoshaphat, his son, succeeded him as king. Now Nadab, the son of Jeroboam, became king of Israel in the second year of Asa, the king of Judah. And he reigned over Israel two years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, following the ways of his father and com committing the same sins his father had caused Israel to commit. Basha, the son of Ahijah, from the tribe of Issachar, plotted against him. And he struck him down at Gibbethon, a Philistine town, while Nadab and all Israel were besieging it. Basha killed Nadab in the third year of Asa, king of Judah, and succeeded him as king. As soon as he began to reign, he killed Jeroboam's whole family. He did not leave Jeroboam anyone that breathed, but destroyed them all, according to the word the Lord had given through his servant Ahijah the Shilonite. 
This happened because of the sins Jeroboam had committed and had caused Israel to commit, and because he aroused the anger of the Lord, the God of Israel. As for the other events of Nadab, Nadab's reign and all he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel? There was war between Asa and Basha, the king of Israel, throughout their reigns. And in the third year of Asa, the king of Judah, Basha, the son of Ahijah, became king of all Israel in Terza. He reigned 24 years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, following the ways of Jeroboam and committing the same sin Jeroboam had caused Israel to commit. All right. So we see the rise and the falls of kingdoms. And so we see in in uh, Jeroboam's um, in Israel, uh, we have not found yet a a, a godly king. Um, we we do see um, a godly king arising in Judah after Rehoboam. We have Ab- Abijah, um, and Abijah he um, yeah, and then we have um, Abijah followed after Rehoboam, continued in the sins. But then Asa, finally, we have a godly king. And Asa does what's right in the eyes of the Lord. And he tears down the Asherahs, you know, expels the male prostitutes, even has his mother, uh, grandmother deposed because she was ungodly as well. So, so we see the rise and the falls of kings and the way the kingdom goes because the kingdom follows the king in whichever way that they are, are uh, heading in their life. All right. And so let's go ahead and jump out over now to, uh, to Psalm we're going to uh, to Psalm 81. All right, Psalm 81. Sing for joy to God our strength. Shout aloud to the God of Jacob. Begin the music, strike the timbrel, play the mel- melodious harp and lyre. Sound the ram's horn at the new moon. And when the moon is full on the day of our festival, this is a decree for Israel, an ordinance of the God of Jacob. When God went out against Egypt, he established it as a statute for Joseph. I heard an unknown voice say, I removed the burden from their shoulders. Their hands were set free from the basket. In your distress, you called and I rescued you. I answered you out of a thundercloud. I tested you at the waters of Meribah. Hear me, my people, and I will warn you. If you would only listen to me, Israel, you shall have no foreign God among you. You shall not worship any other God than me. I am the Lord, your God, who brought you up out of Egypt. Open wide your mouth and I will fill it. But my people would not listen to me. Israel would not submit to me. So I gave them over to their stubborn hearts to follow their own devices. If my people would not only, if my people would only listen to me, if Israel would only follow my ways, how quickly I would subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their foes. Those who hate the Lord would cringe before him and their punishment would last forever. But you would be fed with the finest, but you would be fed with the finest of wheat. With honey from the rock, I would satisfy you. This is powerful. He says, if only, he says, but my people, he, they were stubborn. They would not submit to me. So I gave them over to their stubborn hearts and to follow their own devices. See, that's when, when God says, I gave them over. It's mean God forced them to do something. God gives them over to their, to their follow their own devices. And as they follow their own devices, they reap the consequences, right? We, we reap what we sow. And when the Lord, all he's got to do is lift his hand of blessing and protection over us and allow us to run down the road that we go, that just brings destruction in our lives on our own. And uh, it, But God, it's interesting in verse 13, he says, if my people, if my people would only listen to me, you hear the voice of God, if my people would only listen to me, if Israel would only follow my ways, how quickly I would sub- subdue their enemies. And turn my hand against their foes. And he says, you know, I, I, but, but you, you would be fed with the finest wheat and from, with honey from the rock, I would satisfy you. So God's saying, man, if only my people would do this. And that's a message for us today. If we just continue to follow him and uh, tear down the, tear down the idols and make sure that there is nothing that's coming into our life. The Lord, he works so favorably for us, for the righteous. And uh, that's a great message for us. We see what's happening with the kings and the way that they go. And when we when we invite wickedness into our lives, you know, we're inviting we're, we're inviting, um, you know, just the result of that. When when we open the door to let the world in, I'm telling you, friends, it it is bad news. But if we follow God, 
there is blessing that comes from it. Let's pray together. Lord, I just pray that you would help us to follow you. Lord, that we will turn away from the world, that we will turn away from false idols, God, that we will turn away from those things that that interfere, God, when our, with our relationship with you and us walking as, as citizens of the kingdom of heaven. God, help us to be citizens of heaven. And uh, Lord, that that would be the very first thing, that we would seek first the kingdom of God and your righteousness and all of the rest of these things, Lord, we believe will be added unto us. So Lord, help us to live like that. Help us to believe that. God, help us to to, to, to live as examples, Lord, to the world around us. And uh, Lord, we thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for, uh, for, for the call, God, that you've placed on our lives uh, to live in this way. And we pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, thank you for joining me. Look forward to joining you again tomorrow as we continue to read through the book of, uh, of 1 Kings. All right. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.